Hey guys, Cruel Blind Wave, I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And today, uh, there were some announcements by James Gunn about the future of DC movies. And, uh, we I thought just, they got rid of all that. Well, this is why, because we got to make way for the new. Uh, none of us here at the panel have any idea what we're about to see. We know that there's a video that we're going to watch, and then our uh, support staff has given us some information that we're going to go over. So, I say we jump right into... You didn't get it? Why oh, you guys don't get papers? Hey, that's my... Hey, everybody. I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of, uh -huh. you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That Good. the characters animation. are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like... Matt Reeves Batman or Todd Phillips Joker or Teen Titans Go that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of okay. the mainstream DCU continuity. Now Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First we have Shazam Fury of the Gods. Shazam has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. Reset. Then to move okay. into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. Okay. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, mm. usually having the same actor play their voice <laughs> as who plays them in live action. The next project cool. up is Waller. This is a story Ooh, of Amanda, Amanda Waller, Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This Eggs. is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And <laughs> Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay. okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This Ooh, is a story of a couple lanterns. of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. Both okay. Yeah, we have a few other lanterns peppered in there, but this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of huh. Green Lanterns who are space cops Green Lantern, True watching over Precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters we are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our characters. primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is the story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the Brave and the Bold. Brave, and the, Brave Bold. and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian, Damian. Wayne. Okay. This is based cool. on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin <laughs> who little Batman little tries to get in line. It's a little <laughs> bubble <laughs> story yeah. of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series Ooh. called Booster, Booster Gold. Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. 
It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. So they are going to do now, the Supergirl. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents. Whereas Supergirl, in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. Mm. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp, Swamp Thing! We're going to talk about a very a film. Dark horror story and the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, Swamp those Thing. are the stories <laughs> okay. that I can tell you about right now. Okay. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. All right. Mm. Well, that's a, that's a plan that includes you know, the big three, but also a lot of characters that I personally don't know, which is exciting because that's why I fell in love with Guardians of the Galaxy. From James Gunn. I'm, I'm excited by that. Sure, yeah. I also like the idea of, like, we have a connected world, but we can still have other things, like, you know, like, here's, here's the Joker, yeah. and here's, you know, this. The Batman. The, here's animated stuff, and those can be Elseworld stories that we're going to tell and not have those actually connected to the overarching story that we want to have in our yeah, universe. Sure, yeah. Uh, I, but also the thing that's really interesting is the idea that they have film, TV, games. Video games. Which he didn't jump into, but no, he did not. Being betrayed by the same person, so all yeah. in the same, keeping universe. them connected and stuff. Like, so like when you make a video game, I mean, like how much are they going to put into this? Where it's like, lots of movies have had video games made after them, right? Lots of times it's not necessarily voiced by the same person who did whatever it was. But the heavily movie and influenced stuff. by a movie portrayal. Yeah, you but know. sometimes those don't do the best. Sometimes they they're made really well, you know. So sure. I'm curious to see what they do with that kind of stuff. Or do you try to connect things like when you try to make something like we want to make a game like. Suicide Squad that's supposed to be coming out. Mm -hmm. Are you going to make that on its own in an Elseworlds kind of style, or do you make it where it's going to tie into the whole overarching world? And that's kind of a neat idea. Yeah. Like if Marvel's Spider Man that came out would have been tied into like Tom Holland kind of stuff, mm -hmm. that'd have been kind of neat to be like, I'm playing as this character, and here's a smaller yeah. story that we didn't get to see from yeah. the movies. Sure. That'd be kind of cool. I just want DC to form its own identity aside from the success, great success Marvel has had. Sure. Right? Like, do its own thing, and I, I love the idea of uh, maybe utilizing some lesser-known characters along with the big ones. I mean, we do have a Green Lantern. We have some of that, that big stuff, but there's a lot of things in here I don't know that I will look to the, 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 you know, the OGs, the comic readers, to be like, hey, did they do a good job? But I want to also experience it fresh, too. So that's exciting. Yeah, hmm. interesting. And they talked they talk starting with, like, Shazam. And talking yeah. about like their route to Aquaman. Yeah, I'm a little and then confused. going into creature commandos and stuff. Did it sound like to you that we're gonna go with Shazam and this stuff is gonna take us into like we're gonna reset with Flash and move into what That's the next? That's what it definitely sounded like. Like, does that mean we get to keep like? Uh, Momoa is Aquaman in the future and stuff like that? Or I don't know. Or maybe that's the point where it resets. And well, they we said just, the Flash resets. Yeah. Yeah, but we'd like switch over to another universe with different people playing those. Sure. But it, but different he, people being those heroes. Yeah. Right? It just didn't feel like he was... To me, it didn't feel like he was saying those are going to be Elseworld stories, not connected to our overarching stuff that we have. So Okay, so we just have extra information about all these projects, it looks like. So let's go ahead and just go down through them. We got uh, Creature Commandos, an animated seven-episode series written by Gunn. Seven episodes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, that is already in production. Originally, a team of classic monsters assembled to fight Nazis. This is a modern take on that concept. The voice actors have yet to be cast, but the executives are looking to find people who can voice the animated character and also portray the live action version when the anti-heroes show up in movies and shows. So the creature commandos are anti-heroes, like a it's, monster to fight monster. It's interesting to do because there's definitely voice actors that are like, they're known for having good voices and they can do so many good things with their voice. 
but those people don't necessarily like they could they could voice a crazy character, right? Yeah. Like sure. D. Bradley Baker can voice Appa, but I don't think he's gonna play him in live action. Sure. But Probably he can not. voice him as a CG character. Yeah. So like how many of these characters will be CG transferring over? You know, like Stallone being King Shark. Yeah. Right? And then he can still do that in the animated stuff. Yeah. But and maybe does that work the same for other characters and stuff? You know, I, I am mad. I don't know. And it, it, it's definitely, if we're going for like a seven year plan here, you're going to want to cast a little young so that you can have. Yeah. I mean, a he said eight to ten. Role. Yeah, eight to ten. So yeah. you're going to want to not have four year old actors for. You know some of these big things because you're yeah. gonna want to keep them around for a while. Not things you want to hold on to, yeah. right? Like if you're wanting sure. Superman to be around for a while, you're gonna need a Superman who's a little younger, maybe that can be Superman for a while. Yeah, you're not gonna just grab... graduate high school. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> so it it'll be inter- interesting, I guess, to see how they yeah. who they can find to be those and stuff too. Uh, a lot of these, I think, might end up being like lesser known actors. Yeah. I would imagine so. Iron Man started with Robert Downey Jr., one of the, you know, the big actors, though it was also a risk, too, right? Sure. With him coming back from, from some controversy. So yeah. I'll be interested to see what they do with it. But see, this in the same sense of that, you get Robert Downey Jr., and how much do they pay him for movies? Mm-hmm. How much would he cost for the voice acting side of things? And I do they you. have the money for that, too? That's so going like, to be a very unique contract. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's interesting to, like, hey, we need you to play this character, yeah. but in voice acting and in movies and in this. And right. Whatever else. Yeah. And it also depends, like, how animated is it going to be? Is it going to be performance capture at all? Sure, or yeah. Or is it just going to be voice acting? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, speaking of a character that we do know who's casted, Waller, a spinoff of Gunn's own HBO Max hit series, Peacemaker, which you can find a reaction to every episode of Peacemaker right here on the channel. We had a we great very, deal of fun. very much enjoyed that show. So... I imagined that Gunn was going to try to keep that in in his uh It sounded like him talking about Waller working with the Peacemaker team is like, we are going to take that Peacemaker yeah. team with John Cena. And Which we know actors. she has a very close relationship with people sure. on that team. Yes, And indeed. that show had a connection with Flash and Aquaman. Like, we at least saw those mm-hmm. characters kind of things, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, involved in somewhere, whatnot, so... Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Viola Davis will return as the ruthless and morally ambiguous head of the government task force. It is written by Crystal Henry from Watchmen and Jeremy Carver, the creator of the Doom Patrol TV series, which uh, we are currently covering. It's on break right now, I believe. Um, But especially Doom Patrol, I've really enjoyed that. We were sad to hear that both... uh, I don't know about Titans so much, but <laughs> Titans and Doom Patrol are is gonna be the last season. And Gunn specifically said that was a decision that was made before he took over. So Yeah. Alright, the first big one, in my opinion. Big big. Superman Legacy. And it looked like they were using an image from like what was that? All Star Superman, maybe? The movie featuring the Man of Steel that Gunn is writing and made direct. So not confirming that he's directing, yeah. but he is writing. Although no commitments on that end have been made, while the two previous titles are meant to be Okay, it's like oh, an okay. appetizer, uh, in Saffron's words. Superman <laughs> is the that, true that kickoff for the duo's DCU plans. So we did talk about Shazam and Aquaman and all the stuff that's happening, but here they're talking about a true kickoff. of You know, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I am still a little confused. So, well, cause, yeah, because here's the thing, too. This movie is the kickoff of what they're planning, while those movies have already been being planned by other people. So yeah. are they working on trying to figure out how to take that and move us into this and keep that all in the same continuity? Yeah. Or are they looking at like, well, we'll go through that, and then that eventually will reboot into this. So it says, before audiences get to the films in the series, there is a matter of this year's crop of movies, starting with Shazam, Fury of the Gods, May 17th, continuing with The Flash, June 16th, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and The Last Kingdom. Gun calls The Flash directed by Andy Muschietti, uh, probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made, Jeez. which is a hell of a statement. Yeah. He also said the four mm. leads of those films could potentially continue playing their leading roles in DCU projects down the line. There is nothing that prohibits that from happening, said Gunn. Among those actors is Ezra Miller, the troubled star of The Flash, who has found themselves in several criminal investigations, and pled guilty to trespassing earlier this month, but also told the studio executives that they were getting help. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saffron said that the executives remain hopeful Miller was on the path to betterment. Ezra is completely committed to the recovery. We are fully supportive of that journey that that they are on right now. 
when the time is right, when they are ready to have that discussion, we are uh, we will all figure out what the best path forward is. But right now, they are completely focused on their recovery. And in our conversation with them in the last couple of months, it feels like they're making enormous progress. Uh, they also said, <laughs> we didn't fire Henry. Henry was never cast, said Gunn, talking about Henry Cavill. Uh, for me, it's about who do I cast as Superman and who do the filmmakers we have want to cast. And for me, for this story, it isn't Henry. He added, I like Henry. I think he's getting dicked around by a lot of people, including the former regime at this company. But this Superman is not Henry for a number of reasons. Hmm. So I think that's fair. I still am a little confused uh, about, like, well, where does, like, Aquaman come in at? Because if the Flash is changing everything, then is the Aquaman, like, well, that's the last bit you see of this before it changed, or no, Flash yeah. is changing it before. Okay. So Aquaman and Blue Beetle will be the aftermath, and then potentially move in. And I think the reason they might do that is that then you leave it open for Ezra Miller, right? Of yeah. like, how does that come out? Will we end up using them? Will okay. they go through recovery well? Yeah. And then after they change things, maybe Momoa and uh, shoot, I forget. I feel like I heard who they had in Blue Beetle, but I don't the, remember. The uh, uh, kid from <clears throat> Cobra, Cobra Kai, right? Yeah. yeah. That's who it was. Uh, yeah, which I'm so excited like, about. Like, Miguel. using them and stuff to, like, push in. Like, we could see them Maybe. potentially holding their own roles in, in something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, honestly, in that part, the thing that really stands out is probably one of the greatest superhero movies ever made. Which is interesting. We did hear a thing about, man, I can't believe they've canceled these DC movies and tax reasons. But they're keeping the Ezra Miller flash around yeah. and we heard like well because they think there's it's so really much good controversy <laughs> and everything around sure it. yeah there's so much controversy on ezra more himself mm-hmm. but it's the yeah. movie is just like the movie's this good and there's so many more people attached to this movie than just ezra miller mm-hmm. so is it one of those things where it's like sure ezra's going through some stuff hopefully the recovery kind of thing works for him and he does get help but uh there's you know how many other co-stars behind the scenes people that worked on this movie where it's like they still want to see this movie come out you know yeah no I definitely even though like that. well here's the star and like here's the issues with that it's gonna be just a tough time because as good as the movie can be and as much as you know Ezra is trying to to better themselves um, the court of public opinion has already kind of you know shoot James Gunn at a certain point, too. So I yeah. understand that he's understanding. I, I don't know. I, I'm rooting for everybody to have, one, a fun movie, but two, more importantly, uh, good mental health. <laughs> you know? I sure. just I worry that uh, putting someone on the, like, the forefront of a gigantic stage, like what apparently one of the greatest superhero movies ever made, might could do to, could do to somebody. So sure. we'll see. And all of our thoughts are with people. It's mm-hmm. also interesting that we're going to be having... Four DC movies. They're getting them all out this year. Yeah, yeah. To be done and then move into yeah. things new next year. Because by by December twenty fifth, I think was Aquaman. Yeah, and that was the is. last of the four movies. And that so what is it, March, June, August, December? Like it's a lot of DC movies. Yeah, well, I'll just finish it. So they say that uh, the Superman legacy is not an origin story. It focuses on Superman's balancing his Kryptonian heritage with his human upbringing, and he is the embodiment embodiment of truth, justice, in the American way. He is kindness in a world that thinks that kindness is old-fashioned. A release date of July 11th, 2025 has been penciled in. That could very well change, but yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I mean, I think Superman is the linchpin of the DC Universe, and if you don't have that right, then all the other characters can kind of have... Uh, uh, shaky ground. Shaky ground, yeah. yeah. So I'm interested. You know, I, I love personally love Man of Steel. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but... It's what I sip. The tea, I mean. Superman. I like it. Finish spilling it first, though. All right, let's move on to Landers. Greg Berlanti. um, Greg, move your head. So, long in the works Green Lantern TV series from Greg Berlanti. Yeah, we've uh, heard about this before. Has been scrapped. Oh, never mind. And the duo has parted ways with the longtime DC series steward. Okay. Well, Greg Berlanti's stuff is not good. I know he'd been working on that for a while, and I kept hearing rumors of a... Green Lantern series and stuff too, but yeah, we um we have the end of the Arrowverse upon us as well. You know, they're talking about how television movies all that's going to be sure. super connected. So even though there is the idea of the DC multiverse, when it comes to the focus, they want everybody to to pay attention to just the DCU yeah. now, right? Yeah, sure. And we've seen, or at least have it clearly marked that it's Elseworlds. Sure. Like and we've the, seen the Arrowverse is going to be Elseworlds, right? No, Arrowverse. Well. Yes, yeah. but they're not coming out of After new, so the end of this year, right? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, maybe. I, 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 th- I would say, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that, like, Christopher Reeve's Superman is going to be Elseworlds DC. It's just, it came before all this. So I think the Elseworlds idea is, like, anything coming out as we start this is yeah. now going to be Elseworlds. I get what you mean, so, Calvin. Like, you're talking about, like, how Star Wars took everything and made it Legends and then yeah. moved on. I don't think it's necessarily the same thing. Anything that's going to be coming out separate, like the Joker or whatever, is Elseworlds. Okay. So, but you so know it's what? Still in like terms of a contiguous thought, in the timeline, in right? terms of yeah. a thought process, I think that's still valid too. Sure, because like it'd be fun to be like, okay, well, Superman Legacy. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? And like, could you have a, something in the future where you pull mm-hmm. in Brandon Ruth and bring him from an Elseworlds, oh. even though that movie came out years before? You know. Sure. But I don't know. Yeah, Kingdom Come Superman. Oh. Yeah, there could be some cool stuff with that. Um, so, in its place of the TV Green Lantern series that Greg Berlanti uh-huh. was working on, it will be a new take on the space cops with power rings. Our vision for this is very much in the vein of True Detective, which I find That's, that to be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I especially the first season of True Detective. I watched a little bit of the second and haven't watched any more that I hear is actually pretty damn good. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. So we're not going to be gallivanting out into space at least too much. It's going to be based on Earth. Terrestrial, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we're going to uh, stick around the jurisdiction, (laughs) I guess, of what we have. But both major lanterns. Yeah, Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart are both going to be prominent in this. Um, And it's one of the most important shows they have in development. Uh, This plays a really big role in leading into the main story we are telling across the film and TV. Okay, so yeah, they're keeping it close to the chest, but they obviously have... Big plan. Uh, yeah, it, their own phase one, if you will. Sure. And, and what's going to be happening to connect everything. The Authority is the next thing here, mm-hmm. which I've never heard of them, but a movie based on a team of superheroes with rather extreme methods of protecting the planet uh, that first originated in the late 90s under the influ- influential imprint known as Wildstorm. Okay. Uh, run by artist and now head of DC Publishing, Jim Lee, one of the things of the DCU is that it's not just a story of heroes and villains. Not every film and TV show is going to be about good guy versus bad guy. Giant things in the sky comes and good guy wins. Uh, there are white hats, black hats, and gray hats, added Sa- uh, Saffron. So that was James Gunn that was saying mm-hmm. that. They are kind of like Jack Nicholson and A Few Good Men. They know that you want them on the wall, or at least they believe that. These are the maybe similar anti-hero things. They can be good, they can be bad, yeah. but they're not... These are the dirty dozen. But even right? still, they believe what they're doing is right. You gotta do, somebody has to do what needs to be done. The dirty work. Superman can't do what we need to do. Sure. He's too good. <laughs> we need to keep him pure. Yeah. They're the, they're the Punisher team of the DCU. Yeah. They're doing good shit, but Batman would probably come in and whoop their ass <laughs> for doing <laughs> Maybe, sure. Yeah. What's interesting with this stuff, too, is that I haven't gotten the feeling that this stuff all is going to be necessarily family friendly. Yeah, it feels like we might have much more no, older, yeah. mature stuff, especially with this next one, Paradise Lost. Having the duo describe it as a Game of Thrones style drama set on the all female island that is Wonder Woman's birthplace. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there's going to be things where it's like, well, you know, Marvel could try to keep a lot of stuff family friendly, but they also dive into it. Yeah, you know, I understand what you mean. Like Peace, Peacemaker wasn't family friendly, you know. Like everybody can enjoy the Clone Wars, but especially kids. But if you watch Andor, like, well, everyone can enjoy Andor, but especially adults. Sure, yeah. this does seem a little more adult oriented. Yeah, like Waller, I imagine to be more adult. If the Lanterns is going to be kind of True Detective I thing, say, I wouldn't yeah. think that that would be very you know family friendly necessarily. I mean, what I know of True Detective, you know. Hey, I was a kid and I watched Batman Returns, and sometimes that didn't feel like it was sizzle made for me. <laughs> There's a couple sure. of things in there I'm like. This is naughty. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I like it. So, I'm curious if they keep this to be more yeah. like we're aiming for adults with a lot of this stuff or yeah. what they're going for. So, um, But with Paradise Lost, filled with political intrigue and scheming between power players, it takes place before the events of the Wonder Woman films. Implying okay. that the Wonder Woman films are, are still staying within into the DCU. Maybe. Right? It might, I but mean, Superman's different. They need Henry Or maybe different. it just happens in the timeline before the Flash weird, thing right? happens. That's true, too. With whatever... So, here's one thing that could happen, right? Yeah. You get Flash doing some paradoxy things and changing things. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything's changed and everyone's different. Yeah. But whatever he does, Superman's different, maybe, you know? Sure. I, I don't know. It's like, hard to tell okay. what exactly I happens. I get what you mean. Like, like, that could still exist in another universe. It's just we're transplanted to this universe, and these are our stories now. 
You know, in the Arrowverse, after they ended up doing Crisis on Infinite Earths and, like, the world, the universe was destroyed and we needed to fix things, mm -hmm. it suddenly became a thing that, in all the reactions, Aaron and I, whenever there was a non, like, a continuity problem or something, we'd just be like, Crisis happened, yep. you know? They fixed it, yeah. you know? Who cares? <laughs> Shut up, nerds! <laughs> you know? I yeah. wonder if that will just, like, they'll be able to start and be like, look, I know stuff screwed up, but remember Flash... Ezra Miller really screwed things up all over the place. Yeah, let's just and the let's real just world spread <laughs> some some crisis of infinite earth all over it, and, and it's done. So I feel like whatever they do there with this going yeah. forward, if there's something where it's like okay. this character, we're not going to have Ezra yeah. Miller be Flash anymore, or we're not going to have Jason Momoa be Aquaman anymore. Yeah, you might be able to go back and be like, oh, well, right. the reasoning is because Flashpoint changed things. So I was, I'm a little disappointed because I was hoping for clarity, and I don't feel like it's very clear. However. Just because I feel this disappointment doesn't mean I don't also have room for excitement to be like, hey, let, let this thing grow and breathe and do it naturally, not judging it all at once. Sure. So even though I'm like, man, I kind of wish I had a little more solid answers to this type of thing, yeah. I'm still like, hey, you know, do a plan. That's the and thing it's always needed is someone like to, to have a vision and yeah. have that yeah. vision made. I am, I am at least happy that they have a long-term plan yeah. of what their intentions for these projects are going to be Agreed. and where they're going to sit in the DCU. Because I feel like they've just made things piecemeal like yeah. one or two years in advance. And they haven't really had like a long-term plan of what these things are going to be I agree. or where they're going to sit long-term. And while I think that it is important to have continuity, it is important to set up and you know build into this universe that you're wanting to create, I mean, you still... like the. My number one desire is just good movies, you know? Yeah. Or I, was, I should say good movie that is in a series of good movies sure. that have an overall thing, but not to sacrifice it to the idea of the, you know, of the franchise, of, of the greater good, sure, right? Sure. So I'm excited that these projects seem to at least have a focus. Here's a line, too, of like, should, we, should you look at everything coming out this year? And be like, I'm not going to expect any of this to be tied to anything. That way you're not disappointed of, yeah. of anything. But then also, if it is, I feel like, well, I want to make sure I watch those so yeah. that I know what's happening as this universe kind of unfolds. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny what he said about Shazam. Because when we watched the Shazam trailer, I kind of felt that way. Where I'm like, cool, but is this, does this matter? And then he was like... Hey, you know Shazam? It doesn't really matter that much. So it's easily fittable to something that it wasn't intended for, which is kind of like almost like, you know, you're in on the joke, but also like it works because of its weakness. Sure. Not necessarily its strength. Does that yeah. make sense? I get what you mean. Because like know. even the way it connects in with like, oh, Superman's here. Yeah. You don't see anything. You don't see his you know, face. It could right. be anybody up there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, with that too, I, I had a thought here. The Brave and the Bold... The introduction of the DCU Batman of Bruce Wayne and also introduce our favorite Robin Damian Wayne, who is a little son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see who they cast. Uh, for yeah, that. Um, me too. The movie will take inspiration from the now classic Batman run written by Grant Morrison that introduced Batman to a son he never knew existed, a murderous tween raised by assassins. It's a very strange father and son story, and importantly, it will feature a Batman not played by Robert Pattinson. Yeah. Um, well, is yeah, there, if he has a son. I've been wanting more Ben Affleck. I don't think that we would get him in this, but there's nothing to say that we necessarily wouldn't. The only thing know? he said was not played by Robert Pattinson. Yeah. He didn't say anything about Baffleck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, if you True. did say, like, somehow, like, he's here now, and yeah. all the stuff he went through with, like, uh, who was it? Was it Todd that was killed in the Batman v Jason Superman Todd. thing? Yeah. I think. Like, him struggling with that and now having a son, he's like, I want to help this kid. It could yeah. be fun stories, and I've yeah. seen him in, um, what was that drama that he had, like, a daughter, in Jersey Girl or something like that? Jersey that Girl, right? yeah, right? Kevin Smith. Yeah, and I think, like, Ben Affleck, like, he can do some drama stuff, but he mm -hmm. also, I enjoyed his Batman. I didn't think he got a chance to really shine his Batman sometimes, except yeah. the Snyder Cut, I thought he did better. But I, I, I think, think better, that yeah. he was a good Batman, I think, but I, don't think we're I, I just him. didn't think there was a ton of people that really wanted to see a Batman that really wanted to kill Superman, you know? Sure, I guess, And yeah. then they had to kind of spend a lot of time making up for that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, uh... Don't get me wrong, I'm actually a huge fan of the Snyder Cut, uh, and I enjoyed that, but I I don't really need to see more, you know? I, I mean, if there was more, I'd watch it, but I'm not, like, 
you know. I guess like about. how you feel about Henry. Like I also feel that way about Ben Affleck. Cause yeah. I'm like I wanted to see. I liked what his Batman kind of looked like and some of it. But what they did with him, I'm like I wish they would have done something different. With I, that, I Batman. will agree. I feel like uh, their time in those characters was a little squandered. Yeah. You know, not just because. Something terrible happened to Zack Snyder, both personally and professionally, and we kind of had to wait for to see the fruits of that. Mm-hmm. But because of that, time just slipped by. Sure, so, yeah, you know, it sucks. But uh, and it's probably a lot of people's least favorite story to tell between Superman yeah. and Batman. You want your heroes to get along. True. It's one of the reasons why we didn't enjoy Titans as much. Yeah, sure. You know, yeah, I get you. But I mean, here talking about this Batman. Uh, He's going to need to be a little bit older. He can't be too young. He can't be. Yeah. It can't be too close to Robert Pattinson, who was very like year one, yeah. year two bad. Yeah. That's why I thought of Ben Affleck because I'm like that one was like a later in his life. Older. He already struggled with losing a Robin kind of thing. Yeah. So like it seems like you have an assassin, a son that you didn't know about. You, you may have, try to put yeah. more into that because of the tra- traumatic stuff you had with like a son figure. You have a I mean? character who who's already in that headspace. Yeah. What's the of, like, being ready for that new. Yeah, Padawan, right? Yeah. yeah. What's the craziest what's Batman? The craziest you get? Ba- well, what's the craziest Batman that you cast? Craziest like, you imagine, Batman? You imagine if they just got Christian Bale and they're just like, "Yeah, we're just continuing." Just use Christian Bale. <laughs> yeah. That would be crazy. I feel like his was too grounded though to fit into like a world of Supermans and that. Kind of I, stuff too, I definitely right? agree. I was kind of half kidding. Sure, yeah. But, you know, I mean, that's a crazy. When idea. talking about Damian Wayne, the connections that were made in that third movie, stuff like that. Michael Keaton. Just bring him back. Oh, well, right. you mean, well, you mean a previously he cast had? Batman? I was just trying to think of like the well, craziest actor to play him. Yeah, and I was I thinking mean, like, I don't that know. That is something that's going to happen, right? I mean, Marshall we, from How Much Mother. <laughs> Marshall from How Much Mother, yeah. That would be a crazy be. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of Batmans, though, the Batman sequel, talking about Pattinson, Pattinson will continue to portray the Dark Knight in at least one more crime saga movie directed by Matt Reeves. Mm-hmm. That movie, The Executives Revealed, will be released October 3rd of 2025 and is being titled The Batman Part 2. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Safran said, 2025 is going to be a very big year for DC, Superman and Batman within the same year. But not connected to each other. These two will not be known. Yeah. Not these two. Yeah. I, was, I don't... They didn't say anything about... like There was supposed to be like a Penguin TV show from the Matt Reeves universe, I heard, and... I don't know if they're going to continue into that. Were those not. rumors, or were they like announced that they were doing it, or do you know? Well, I can't be 100% certain just because the, the deeper I go into the internet, the more likely I am to get spoiled about something sure. that I don't want to see. Yeah. Um, you know, we like to do these type of videos because we want to, we want to, you know, have the right information, but not so much that we're ruining things for ourselves. So. Yeah, I get you. I, I'm not really sure exactly the answer to that question, but... Uh, you know, I, I liked the Batman. Uh, it wasn't. It, it's not my favorite Batman movie, uh, but I'm interested to see where it goes. I, I liked a lot of the things that it did. Um, I just, yeah, I liked. I liked Ben Affleck's Batman more. I just didn't like the movie he was in. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But not to get nothing against Robert. I think like I think there's some interesting things you could do with that, and there was some there was some cool things they did. Oh, the yeah, Riddler wasn't my favorite Riddler. But I mean, if you want to talk about grounded. Like, yeah. that was pretty grounded. It's pretty grounded. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> True. Like, it yeah. might be... Yeah, it's it's there with, like, Christian Bale's Batman yeah. as far as, like, a grounded mm. kind of movie and stuff. So. Gritty. But it will be in Elseworlds, clearly marked for your convenience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Booster Gold. Next yes. one here is an HBO Max series based on a unique and low-tiered hero created in 86. It's about a loser from the future who uses basic future technology to come back to today and pretend to be a superhero. Uh, Gunn described it as imposter syndrome as a superhero, which... Isn't that just The Incredibles? The Incredibles had superpowers. Syndrome was an imposter. Well, yeah. As a superhero. Sure. <laughs> That's kind of the idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Booster Gold is. But instead <laughs> of being a genius like Syndrome, Booster Gold just takes shit lying around and goes back until it's yeah. impressive. He gets a cigarette lighter <laughs> from the future and brings it back and is like, right? FIRE! Yeah, it's kind of similar to Abracadabra, the villain that we've seen like in the Flash TV show. Yeah. Hmm. Where he just brings back technology and everybody thinks he's a magician. <laughs> Any sufficiently advanced technology... Uh-huh. I should say, like, for a lot of these newer characters, I don't have a base knowledge of their comic book stories, yeah. but Booster yeah. Gold has been adapted enough where I'm like, I remember this character from Smallville. Uh, I remember that Booster Gold and Blue Beetle have had connections before, and, uh, you know, Ted Core, that type of mm-hmm. stuff. So that'd be interesting to see mm-hmm. if we can get yeah. into that. But I'm open, and it is a series, too. Peacemaker took a character that I had almost zero connection with other than I just John Cena is fun yeah, uh, sure, yeah. and made a really cool series about it so I'm yeah. open to that 
Um, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, taking its cues from the recent Tom King written miniseries and movie, promises to have a different take than what most think of when the idea of Superman's cousin comes to mind. Uh, we will see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents in the time, uh, from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl raised on a rock, um, just a piece of Krypton, who was who watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life and then come to Earth. So it's going to be more of a hardcore and not the Supergirl that we're used to. So okay. not like Supergirl TV show that we had from the Arrowverse. Yeah. Because um, she's right. hers was not she wasn't on Krypton, but she got like stuck into like the Phantom Zone, mm -hmm. sure, or whatever, and then she left at the same time, but right? she just arrived like ten years later Much or something later. like yeah, that, right? Yeah. So and she had been older, but because of her time there, she ended up end up being like younger by the time she gets to Earth and stuff sure. too. So it'd be interesting to see like a more jaded Supergirl or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Where it's like she's seen the death and everything. And almost, that can be perceived as more dangerous than Superman. I was going to yeah. say, it's almost like a uh, a Black Adam kind of feel. Yeah. Black Adam? Not in this right up. Not mentioned nope. in anything Not at all. Or anything, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this one it sounds really cool. I just like the idea. Swamp Thing. A horror film that promises to close out the first part of the first chapter. I'm super excited for this. Yeah. If it's anything like the TV show that we've seen TV and reacted to on the channel. Um, yeah, I am so down for this. I mean, that may be the reason too of like the TV show was so expensive to do. But if we do a movie, we set it up when we need to. We do it when we're done. We take it down. You don't have to keep yeah. it up for trying to do multiple seasons or anything. Sure. Right? I love so. that TV show, um, Calvin. You're wearing a Watchmen hoodie that was done, you know, based on an Alan Moore comic about Watchmen. Alan Moore's Swamp Thing run is some of the best, not just comic book, but stories I've ever read, like read in my life. Yeah. Uh, if it all comes close to that, yes. yes they have plenty to pull from, <laughs> yes, at <please>. least. <laughs> yes, please, and give me more. Uh, and as I say, of this being the first chapter of the DCU. And yeah. it's interesting on, like, what is the idea of this overarching story thing that they're kind of talking about? What's the mystery that the Lanterns unlock? Yeah, yeah what are they doing? How? Why does Swamp Thing close it out, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, we have, you know, Black Panther is coming out uh, really soon. Uh, I think it's like this week. Like it's already out in theaters, but it comes out to like Disney Plus soon, and that closes out like Phase Four. Yeah. And sometimes you have movies where it's like it, you see an overarching between all the movies, and then they come together for like Avengers. Sure. But then other times you're like, okay, well this one I it just closes off this chapter, and then we move into the next chapter, yeah. mm -hmm. and then we'll get into like all the little clues and tidbits that we've been building up, really kind of culminate into something else. So I'm curious to see how they do that with this and what they kind of have in their minds yeah. as to what it would be. The thing that like, I think we I, get a Justice League eventually or anything, yeah. you know. Now, again, when it comes to like comic knowledge, you know, I'm gonna throw you to my boy Koi Jandru, who uh, he he knows all this stuff. So when I see uh, the Authority and Paradise Law, you know, you know some of these other smaller characters, I go, huh, interesting. But it doesn't like it's not they're not throwing in the big big wigs, right? Sure. Necessarily, I mean, we got Superman, we got Batman, we loosely have Wonder Woman in yeah. a way, but the authority, like, I, I think that they're going to be going for not unknowns, but new stories to keep you interested and then tent pull you later. You know, Maybe. does that make sense? I could creature see commandos, that the authority, even Waller and is not necessarily the most well known character to a general audience. Yeah, sure. It also pulls away from what they've been doing mm -hmm. to where, hey, all this stuff happened. We're going to pull away from those characters a bit. We're going to do something a little different, yeah. and then we'll maybe get back to those. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, it might give them some time to decide, like, maybe what are they doing with Aquaman and Jason Momoa? Is that something that, they gonna, that they're going to keep around and use into the future? Or is it something where it's like, that happened after we've gotten to talk about it more yeah. and see where things have gone, we've actually gone in a different direction and Jason Momoa is not going to work out anymore. I thought he was going to be Lobo. Maybe. You know, <laughs> that could be. So, Yeah, maybe Arthur Lobo. Curry is Lobo in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's <Fuck> definitely... <laughs> this gets on a Harley and rides off to space. It's definitely interesting that yeah. they have a lot of, like... They still have Superman and they still have Batman. Mm -hmm. like they, those are, the, I feel like, some of the big ones, but... I don't know. How I do feel like if you wanted to get people maximally excited, this isn't necessarily the slate you pull out. But if you want people to say, hey, I'm taking this seriously and trying something new, which I think all of us really want. Yeah, we want to be excited, but we really want something different. Because sure. DC, for a long time now, has been like, you like Batman? Yeah, well, here's a Batman. Then here's a Batman. Then here's a Batman. Sure. Then here's a Batman. And I'm kind of like... 
All right, and now you, now we're going to have multiple Batmans and stuff. And I think it's interesting, but I think a general audience has the uh, potential to be a little lost. So I think you need to have someone like James Gunn influencing, writing, and directing what sounds like a very, very complicated plan. Sure. And I don't even know, too, like, in this... In this first chapter, like, they didn't talk anything about games mm-hmm. at all. No. Like, are no. those going to be other things that are sprinkled in and whatnot that they use? Um, or is that something that they haven't quite considered of what they want to do with that yet? Maybe you know? the games just keep coming out as they are made. And then the, like, the studio decides, like, well, there's nothing in here that contradicts anything from the films or the animated series. So it can be in for now. We all... Yeah, we also had to consider development time too, right? Like yeah. a, a AAA game can take four years to make, whereas can take a eight. giant movie could be done in a year. Yeah. Sure. It's why a lot of movie video games typically aren't the best too, mm-hmm. because the time it takes to make a movie is a lot shorter than the time it takes to make a game. Yeah. So the development time you have on the game is like not that long, because typically you want it to release when the movie comes mm-hmm. out. Yeah. And by the time you're greenlit for the movie, so now you greenlight the game, yeah. you get a year or two maybe, you know? Sure. But no, I'm curious to see what they do and how it plays out, and then what we decide on doing later on. But I think it's probably a good idea to pull away, and like James Gunn said, like um, it seems like the focus they want to go with is storytelling. Yeah. And Batman's had a lot of stories. You know, People are going to be like, I've already seen Batman, so like, let's toss in some new characters that we haven't seen, right? Mm-hmm. I- I'm excited for the Blue Beetle movie. I don't know what they're going to do with it exactly and how it's going to stay tied in, but... I can't think of ever having a Blue Beetle movie ever, you know? Yep. So I've seen them in some TV shows and stuff Mm -hmm. like that too, but like Mm -hmm. a movie will be something new and hopefully something fresh. And I don't know a lot of his like comic stories or anything, you know? Sure. So I'm I'm interested in seeing that and what they do with that. And same with you about Peacemaker, you know? I didn't know who Peacemaker was except for seeing him in Suicide Squad. So getting a chance to see him or Guardians of the Galaxy or any of that and be like, man, these characters are pretty cool. And I didn't know that. They took characters that I didn't know before that and. After having finished watching it, I was like, I, I wasn't like, I want to see more of them, but they convinced me later that I did. Mm, yeah, <laughs> sure. Like, I want to see more Peacemaker now yeah. because of what they did with that character. So what is your number one, this is my most, the most excited part of these, these announcements? Of what they that, said here? Yeah. What um, I really love the idea of having different genres in comic books and stuff. Yeah. And it's not just like an action comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I really enjoyed having like the newest Doctor Strange be more of a horror. So I never watched the Swamp Thing horror movies, whatever, before. I don't even know if they were necessarily horror movies. As um, a kid, I was scared. Sure. <laughs> but to have this being like a horror movie, yeah. I'm like, that sounds cool. And I don't know if Swamp Thing's the monster or is he stopping the real monster. Mm-hmm. But whatever the case is, I like the idea of just having like a lot of people, when they think of comic books, they think of the superheroes, the Spider-Mans, it's action, it's comedy, it's sad and drama, sure. but it's not usually scary, and yeah. I like having those different genre feels. So I'd say yeah. Swamp Thing's my big, like, ooh, that's cool. I, like I, I expect Supermans and Batmans yeah. and all that. I don't always expect Swamp Thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in Lanterns to see, like, how gritty and how grounded and dark they go with it, because, yeah. like, depending on... On the, the feel that they're going for, yeah, the they true can go feel. pretty dark with it. Like the lanterns can enforce the law, kind of how they see fit, right? Yeah. Just as long as they keep the peace, and so long as nobody's complaining to the lantern corps, then everything's fine, right? So yeah. They might go dark with it. I might be most excited, and this is kind of a weird one. I mean, I think Swamp Thing is very much up there, but Damian Wayne, because. Robin, I feel, in the live-action element, has been kind of shortchanged. You know, not nothing against, like, you know, the Robin from the... Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, Chris O'Donnell. That was a Robin. But he was more, like, casted and, and played, like, the idea of Robin versus some of the stories that I've seen in the comics and stuff. But other than that, we've kind of, like, well, this Robin's dead, or this one's a cop right now. You know, like, we've never had a really fully fleshed-out Robin live-action. And I think Damian Wayne demands for there to have been Robins that he is filling the place of, you mm-hmm. know? So I think that we might be able to develop that Bat Family thing in a way that I'm actually excited by versus sometimes I feel like, eh, it's just they screwed up Robin again, <laughs> you sure. know? So, I don't know. Robin, Batman Robin was such an important part of my childhood, both watching reruns of the 66 Batman, watching the Batman the Animated Series, and I never really 
felt like I got that on live action. Sure. Screen. They usually don't use him on movies yeah. much. Mm-hmm. It's typically he's dead or yeah. he's just not around. And I personally did not enjoy Titans. Well, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph Gordon Levitt. I thought he was okay, but he never got a chance to be it. Yeah, and you they know? just kind of dropped it towards the end. And he like, was just going to be the next Batman, you know. Yeah, I get you. Man. Uh, so there was never going to be that idea of Bruce Wayne, a child in Arrested Development, seeking justice, now has to care for those that also are going to be Arrested Development, right? So I always thought that was really interesting. Bruce as a father, maximally interesting. And yeah, you got to nail the casting of this kid because he's got to be a jerk, but you got to love him. Sure, yeah. Poor Tim Drake, though. Mm-hmm. Seth Green. As Robin? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's too old. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, Batman, he's great. Hey, hey. People are shooting at him. He's, uh, and Batman just beating everybody. No, Green, to not him. Rogan. Yeah. Seth, You're thinking of Seth Rogan. You're saying it's Seth Rogan. <laughs> well, he's also too old. I yeah. know. Yeah. No, I think they're both too old. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Rogan. I was like, that would be hilarious, man. <laughs> Make Can you imagine him? him? Make him Batman or Superman. To be fair, they already kind of did that with uh, the Green Hornet. Seth Rogen, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm probably excited the most for Brave and the Bold, but Superman Legacy sounds pretty cool, too. Like, it it sounds quote-unquote generic to me, but Mm. this is James Gunn, who I've never, I don't think has ever been confused as being like, ah, playing it safe. So, you know. I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Peacemaker wasn't safe. No. No, it was not. It went hard. Yeah. Went real hard. So I'm curious to see too how this how this chapter yeah. is for family versus mature and stuff. Because mm-hmm. like having kids and stuff, I know they like superhero movies and stuff too. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like a lot of these are for them. Yeah. I feel like they're more maybe for me or maybe for other people. Maybe they're not even for me. You know, it just depends. Sure. But I'll be curious to see how that part of it is as well. Yeah, I mean he's making plans to last until I'm 45. So damn, <laughs> you know, like. What's 45-year-old Eric going to be wanting by yeah. the time that comes out, you know? Never mind. My kids will be old enough to watch it then. Yeah, they'll be old enough. We'll be <laughs> good. Man, 45. Fuck you, Eric. <laughs> All right, guys. So it seems like we have a uh, bright future when it comes to the DCU. And you'll want to subscribe to Blind Whip because not only are we going to be watching television shows and movies right here on the channel, we'll, uh, we'll try to have more conversations and fun videos like this where we can just kind of talk and put our feelings out there about what's coming up in the future. If you like this video, let us know. And subscribe.